OK, let's compare answers for last week's homework. Page four. Annual self evaluation. Well, comma, Ms. Ehrlich, comma, that time of year has arrived again. I, no comma, so take out this comma. I must think about my strengths and weaknesses as an employee no comma of toe ring international first and most important comma let me say that i love working for toe ring so this is a complete sentence this is not a complete sentence so to separate the two, you should add a comma before the subject of the sentence. The problem is this sentence does not have a subject. It's an imperative sentence. Let is saying you, you let me say, although the meaning is not an order. The meaning is just to be polite, but the grammar is to order the other person to let him speak. So with no subject, you have to put the comma before the verb. When I applied for the job, comma, so this one is more traditional. When is a subjunctive, no, when is a subordinate conjunction, as we talked about last week. The main, sten uh, the main sentence starts with I. So between the subordinate clause and the main sentence, you put a comma. I never dreamed how much fun I would have taking two no comma long lunches a day. Sometimes you will put a comma between two adjectives, but that's only when both adjectives make up the same category. Last semester, we talked about how English adjectives are separated into several categories. Uh, depending on things like, for example, uh, the origin or the proximity or the color or the number. If the two adjectives are from the same category, then you can separate them using only one comma. But here, these are two different categories. Two is a number. Long is time. A long lunch just means you spend a lot of time on lunch. So these are two different categories. You do not and you should not add this comma. You have to take this comma out. Sneaking out the back door, no comma, is not my idea of fun. This is, in fact, one complete sentence. You can probably see that the main verb is here. Is is the main verb. The subject is this gerund, sneaking out the back door. It's a gerund. Uh, this action, the sneaking itself, and all of the related information is the subject of this sentence. So you don't need a comma. Because no one ever watches what I'm doing at Toe Ring, comma, this part begins with because. So it's, okay, so this is a complete sentence, but this is not. When you add the word because, it turns this complete sentence into a reason. Because is, as we said last week, a subordinate conjunction. 
the main sentence begins with the subject here, I. So there should be a comma before the subject. I can leave by the front door without worrying. Also, comma, Ms. Ehrlich, I confess that I do almost no work at all. Upon transferring to the plant in Idaho, comma, eh, it's not letting me. There should be a comma after Idaho here. Again, upon is a subordinate conjunction, which means when this happened. And the main sentence begins with I. Uh, plant here means factory. By the way. I immediately claimed a privilege given only to the most experienced, comma, most skilled, no comma, employees. So last week I already talked about why you should add a comma here, but you should take out this comma because what this is, this comma is saying that these two adjectives, experienced and skilled are in the same category of adjectives. So you can separate them with a single comma. Therefore, you don't need another comma later. There's no reason to use this comma here. So uh, claim the privilege and started to take two no comma extra weeks of vacation. Again, two and extra are different categories of adjectives. Two is a number, extra is a quality. Uh, so you don't need a comma here. I have only one more thing to say. May I have a raise? OK, do you have questions about page four? Is there some part you don't understand? You want me to explain again? You want me to explain in Chinese? You want me to explain in Japanese? Sorry, I don't know Japanese. So if you want me to use Japanese, uh, you should take another class. OK, uh, so if you don't have questions, let's talk about this week's unit. Participial constructions, ooh, big words, so scary. But really, it's not that scary. There are three kinds of participial constructions. In Chinese, we call this fen si gou zhu, if you remember what that is. Um, I will remind you. Let me give you the first kind of participial construction. OK, there we go. Perfectly clear, very easy. So what this says is if you have two sentences. Subject. Verb, object, everything else. Plus. The same subject. A new verb, a new object and a new everything else. So these two sentences have the same subject. And these two sentences are related in some way. I'll talk about that a bit more later. 
you can combine these two sentences. The main sentence is the second half after the comma, just like last week, right? The main sentence begins after the comma. The subject appears here. Now, every sentence without a conjunction can only have one subject. So there is no subject here. Without a subject, you can't just use a verb, so we change this into what's called a present participle, which is basically a verb that ends in ing. And you complete the rest of the first sentence, add a comma, and then the second sentence is exactly the same, no change. So let me give you an example. OK, so in this example, you have two sentences. John drove to class. John was going very fast. These are both complete sentences. These are perfectly formed sentences. As Donald Trump might say, the best sentences. You'll notice that the subject is the same. Now, these two sentences are related. The idea is that John was driving very fast when he was driving to class. So we can actually put these two sentences together. According to the formula, the subject appears in the second half, and the second half is the complete sentence. It is exactly the same before and after. The change all happens in the first half. The subject is the same, so we ignore the subject. We turn the verb into a present participle, ing and we copy the rest of the sentence and then we change this first period to a comma so the first half goes from john drove to class to driving to class comma this new sentence tells us that there is a relationship between these two ideas so this sentence the meaning of this sentence is, in fact, something like, as John was driving to class, he was going very fast. There's an idea that these two things are happening at the same time, or even that they are the same thing. The participial construction sentence structure can tell the reader to pay attention to the relationship between these two ideas, the two halves of this sentence. Should I give you another example? OK, somebody give me a verb. Go, I just used it, use another one. Walk, OK. So this is an, another example of participial construction. Walking very fast, Mary ran into a tree. This is a complete sentence, right? Mary is the subject, ran is the verb, run does not take an object, right? That's why there's these parentheses, no object. And this is everything else, this part. 
when you see the first half, no subject, the verb ends in ing, and it's separated by a comma, this tells you that this is an example of participial construction. The subject is the same, and that these two events are connected in some way. So we can take apart these sentences. OK, questions? Now, we have been putting the participial part in front. But you can also put it in the back if you want to. You can even put it in the middle. So for example, Here, the complete sentence, Mary ran into a tree, is still complete. Mary ran into a tree. We have simply put this part in the middle. Now, not only do you need this comma to separate the incomplete part of the sentence from the complete part, you now also need this comma to tell you that we are going to interrupt the main sentence and add extra information. You can do this with any kind of subordinate clause. So last week we were seeing word, uh, parts of the sentence that began with because, although, upon, when, all of these parts. You can also move to the middle of the sentence and separate with two commas. I often tell my students when you use commas like this. It means the same thing as. Disease. The meaning is the same. You're adding extra information that is not very important, but you think that the reader should know. In fact, English has three ways of adding this kind of extra information. The first one is parentheses, gua ha. The second one is commas. The third one is called an m dash. In Chinese, we call this pu zhe ha. If you see two m dashes like this, the meaning is the same. The author is giving you extra information that from a grammar standpoint is not very important. So when do you use the parentheses? When do you use a comma and when do you use an M dash? I should tell you this is called an. Dash. How do you choose? The grammar is exactly the same. The difference is in the meaning. The difference is. OK, this is extra information, but how important is this extra information? If it is very not important, use parentheses. If the extra information is very important, use M dashes. And if it's somewhere in the middle, then use commas. But the the uh, grammar is the same. You are putting extra information in the middle of a sentence. Uh, and you're not just adding this information. You're moving it from a different part of the sentence and you're moving it into the middle. Right as we saw, this should have been at the beginning. And we're now moving it to the middle. You can also move it to the end. Mary ran into a tree comma walking very fast is also grammatically acceptable. So this is the first kind of participial construction. Do you have questions? Uh, 
OK, well, I said three kinds. The difference is not very big. The second kind of participial construction is the kind that begins with being or having. For example, Having driven to class, John made it just in time. Again, the second half is a complete sentence. The first word is a verb that begins with ing. So you know this is a participial construction. The subject is the same. So the you can understand the first half as. This. John had driven to class. The subject is the same, so we can take out the subject and you turn the first verb into a present participle ending with ing. The rest of the sentence is the same. So when would you use this kind of participial construction? Well, when the relationship between the two halves happens at a different time. So in fact, the original sentence probably looks more like this. John drove to class plus John made it just in time. These two things happen at different times. First John drives to class, then he makes it. So you can use the perfect aspect to tell the reader which one happens first. The driving happens first. When would you use being at the beginning? When that part of the sentence, the main verb is a be verb. Once again, the second half is a complete sentence. John always makes sure to get to class on time is a complete sentence. Separated by a comma, first word is a verb ending in ing, so this is the same subject. So you know that the first sentence should be John is a good student. The main verb is a be verb, and that's why it begins with being. Now you might be thinking, OK, but isn't this the same rule as the first kind? Why is this the second kind? And the reason this is a new category is because if you start with being, you can do this. You can omit the word being. You can simply say a good student. John always makes sure to get to class on time. And the grammar is valid. It is acceptable. So this is the second kind of participial construction. Questions? OK, one more. The third kind. We have been saying that there is some kind of relationship between the two halves. But sometimes you want to tell the reader what the relationship is. Once again, the second half of the sentence is a complete sentence separated from the first half by a comma and the main the verb in the first half ends in ing. There's no subject, so you know this is a participial construction and the subject of the first half is still John. The difference 
is that now you have added a subordinate conjunction. So the reader doesn't have to guess what is the relationship between the two halves. You can directly tell the reader. So if you want to uh, revert the first sentence, it should be. John was driving, not just drove, right? Because now you have the word while. While means in the middle of. So John is doing this thing. He is in the middle of driving to class. Uh, and you can do this with any kind of subordinate conjunction. Questions? OK, well, uh, let me tell you, I have already prepared the midterm exam. And this kind of sentence will be on the midterm exam. So please pay close attention. Uh, and if you need to review, you can always go on Moodle because I am recording every lecture and I will post a link. So this is the link to last week's lecture. Uh, this week I'll go home, upload it, put a link here, and you can watch it again. If you did not, uh, if you were not here for the first week, I strongly encourage you to watch the first week. The first week is the most important week. Okay, so now you have the basic idea. Let's do some questions to practice. When we do these practice questions, every week. Don't worry about getting the wrong answer. The point is not to get the right answer. The point is to learn why an answer is right or wrong. If you only get the right answer, that's so boring. You already know everything. There's no point. But if you get all wrong answers, every single question is something that you can learn about. So let's take a look at page five. This set of questions is asking you. Is the first sentence. The same as the second sentence. Is the meaning the same? Uh, so let's look at the example question number one. Having spent the day exploring ruins, ruins are the remains of old buildings. Feishu. Reg and Maggie were driving south. Sentence two, spending the day exploring ruins, Reg and Maggie were driving south. And these two sentences mean different things. As we just said, the word having tells us that the first half happened and then the second half happened. But the second sentence does not have the word having. It looks like present tense. Uh, and as we mentioned last semester, present tense can sometimes mean a plan for the future. So this sentence actually means that they have a plan to spend the day exploring ruins. Therefore, they are driving south. But the first sentence means they have already spent the whole day exploring ruins. Now they are driving south to go home. So in the first sentence, the ruins are in the north and home is in the south. But in the second sentence, they are going to explore those ruins. So the ruins are in the north. Sorry, the ruins are in the south and home is in the north. The directions are completely different. In the first sentence, this happens first, and so this means they're going home. In the second sentence, this has not yet happened, so this means that they are going to the ruins. They're going away from home. Time changes location.
OK, uh, we have seven more questions. If you think they are the same meaning, check yes. If they are different meanings, check no and prepare to explain why the meanings are different. Seven questions. I'll give you five minutes. Feel free to discuss with your classmates.
All right, let's compare answers. Remember, don't worry if you get it wrong as long as you learn why it's wrong. Number two, are these two sentences the same? Are they the same? They are the same. Let's check. Not knowing what to do, Reg carefully weighed the options, so he considered what to do. Because he didn't know what to do, Reg carefully weighed the options. Yes, these two mean the same thing. Good. So right so here we see an example. Simply giving us the verb means that we have to guess what is the relationship between these two sentences. But if you give the subordinate conjunction, you're telling us the relationship. Number three, are these two the same? Orange. Orange. Yes, are these two the same? Number three. They are not the same. Let's check. Shots rang out, shattering both windows on the driver's side of the car. So first the shots and then the windows were broken. Having shattered both windows on the driver's side of the car, shots rang out. This one is first the windows, then the shots. So they are different, correct? Good. Number four, are these two sentences the same? Where are you? Yes, number four, are these two the same? Yes, all right, let's check. The green's car took off, which means started going away, easily outdistancing the bandit's car. Bandit means bad guy, outdistance means going farther than. So first the car starts, then they leave the bad guys behind. Second one, having outdistanced the bandit's car, the green's car took off. So this one having, so this part happens first. First, they leave the bad guys behind, then the car leaves. So these two sentences are not the same. Number five, Yi Shen. Yes, are these two sentences the same? Yes, they are. Let's check. Upon opening the door, Reg saw blood oozing from Nicholas's head. Who's Nicholas? Some new guy. OK, so first he opens the door, then he sees Nicholas bleeding from his head. Second one, when he opened the door, Reg saw blood oozing from Nicholas's head. Yes, these two sentences are the same. Number six, Hong Chen Han. Are these two sentences the same? Yes, they are. Let's check. After being rushed to a hospital, Nicholas lay in a coma for two days. So he was uh, he was not awake for two days. So first he gets to a hospital, then he's lying there for two days. Second, after he was rushed to a hospital, Nicholas lay in a coma. Yes, these two sentences are the same. We see another example of using being as the connecting participle. Uh, we said if the main verb is a be verb, then it turns into being. Here, it's a passive verb, also beginning with be. So when you use a participial construction, then it should be being. Number seven, are these two sentences the same? Zhuang uh, san. Are you here? Oh, quite sanzu. Uh, Hong. Yes, are number seven. Are these two sentences the same? They are not. All right, let's check. Nicholas lay in a coma for two days, his status not changing. These two things happen at the same time. Second one, Nicholas lay in a coma for two days because his status didn't change. Well, 
the first sentence I don't think has causation. I don't think it's because. So yes, these two are different. Um, and just a reminder, the word lay is the past tense of lie, tangzi, the guo zhi si. And number eight, Wang Yuzhen. Wang Yuzhen zai ma? Oh, 大概跟庄严山去上厕所去了。Uh, Yue Fang Yu. Number eight. Are these two sentences the same? Yes, they are. All right, let's check. How many of us would do the same thing given the opportunity? Uh, so this is omitting the word be, being given the opportunity. So the idea is when we are given the opportunity, would we do it? Number two, how many of us would do the same thing if we were given the opportunity? Yes, so these two mean the same thing. Questions? OK, uh, before we get into the next set of questions, I want to show you something cool. So I keep saying that the two halves are connected. And the reader, you have to guess what is the connection. But actually, as I said in the first week, and as I said last semester, grammar determines meaning. Grammar decides meaning. When we learn grammar, we often think uh, the grammar has to fit the situation. But no, in fact, the grammar creates the situation. Let me give you an example. Give me a verb. Give me a verb. Dance. Thank you. Give me another verb. Run. All right. Dancing in the street at 3 a.m., Terry ran his company like a genius. So we know from the grammar, this is a, eh, sorry, this is a complete sentence separated from the first half with a comma. And there's no subject. The verb is ing. So in fact, the subject is the same in the first half. Terry dances in the street at 3 a.m. Terry runs his company like a genius. But what is the connection between these two sentences? The grammar creates the situation. This sentence is saying that because he was dancing in the street at 3 a.m., Terry could run his company like a genius. And so now we have an idea of a creative genius, like a, a crazy version of Steve Jobs doing crazy stuff that somehow is good for his company, that he's such a genius, we don't understand why it works, but it works. Grammar creates your situation. And this is also why grammar is so important. If your grammar is wrong in just the wrong way, somebody could take a different meaning from you and not the meaning that you want to say. All right, let's take a look at the bottom half of page five. It says that there are five mistakes. I'll tell you right now. There are. Uh, there's one mistake involving a comma. There are th four mistakes involving today's subject, the participial construction. And among those four, one of them is very, very hard. So let's take a 10 minute break and when we come back, we will compare answers.
All right, let's compare answers. Eh, I'll, I'll guide you through this one. This one's a bit harder. When arriving at the Cairo airport, I was certain I had plenty of time to make the connection for my next flight. So this person is making a transfer. Not eating on the plane. So this should be not having eaten. This happened in the past. Not having eaten on the plane and feeling very hungry. So this person did not eat in the past. Now they are feeling in the present very hungry. I stopped at a restaurant to get some food. Losing track of time. I was enjoying my meal. Now, this is not a participial construction problem. This is simply logic. Uh, and the logic is. The person lost track of time. Because they were enjoying in the middle of enjoying their meal. Then. Comma. Right, this is before the main sentence, so then comma. I glanced at my boarding pass. Uh, and saw I had 15 minutes to make it to my flight gate. I had a lot of heavy bags, so I grabbed them and started running toward the gate. Knowing. Knowing I'd never make it on time, so this is happening at the same time as uh, this person is grabbing and running. Just then, out of the blue, which means suddenly, a man I'd never met took a couple of my suitcases and got me to the gate with five minutes to spare. I wish I could have returned the favor. OK, do you have questions? Uh, do you want me to repeat something? OK, well, I'm sure if you have questions, you will come and bother me after class. Next page. There are 10 mistakes in the use of um, what we've been talking about. The first one is already corrected. Find nine more. Now, let me warn you. Some of these words are highlighted. That means nothing. They could be right. They could be wrong. We don't know. So ignore that. Um, but you can see the kind of mistake they're looking for. If you're so this one is called a helping hand. If you're at all like me, you hear a lot of requests to help others. Barraging changed to barraged by constant appeals for money to support homeless shelters. OK, so a barrage is a multiple. So what is attacking the author? This is passive voice. What is attacking the author? Appeals for money. People want this person to give money. So related to the ing use of verbs, nine more mistakes. Uh, yeah, I'll give you. I mean, how hard is this? It's not too hard, right? OK, nine mistakes. I'll give you six minutes.
All right, let's compare answers. Um, tell you what, I will tell you which lines have a mistake. And then I will ask you if you have found a mistake in that line. So we can make it slightly easier for you. If you're at all like me, you hear a lot of requests to help others. Barraged by constant appeals for money to support homeless shelters, the Special Olympics, or the like, which means or something similar. People tend to tune out, so to not listen. I certainly used to do that. OK, this line, line three, has a mistake. Let's see if you found it. Wu Mingling, are you here? Wu Mingling. Mm. Ye Liang Yi. Hi, did you find a mistake on line three? Still looking? Uh, let me help you. I don't think I was selfish, but subjected. To be subject to means to uh, like be hit by, to take in. So in fact, you want the passive voice, your beidong, to be subjected to. So being subjected to, and then you can omit the being, right? Being case under So the end result is subjected to. So many requests. I felt overwhelmed and my brain was numbed. After listening to yet another TV request asking viewers to sponsor a child overseas, I would say to myself, I'll bet the money is pocketed by some local politician. Pocketed means to put into your pocket. Finally, convincing myself that I didn't have enough money to help others in any case, I was able to ignore all the requests. This line has a mistake. This one, say to myself this line. Did you find the mistake, Ouyanghen? Oh, did you find the mistake in this line? Yes. This is wrong. How should we correct this? Well, it is convincing, right? So this should actually be having convinced. Look at this. This is the sentence we're talking about. Comma is here. After the comma is a complete sentence. I was able to ignore all the requests. How was he able to ignore all the requests? Because he had convinced himself that he didn't have enough money to help others in any case. So this is before and after. First, he convinced himself, I can't, I don't have enough money. Then he was able to ignore all of these requests. Make sense? Yeah, so this should be, in this. the first half happened in the past, so it should be having convinced. Or at least that was the way I thought before sent by my magazine to South America to do a human interest story on poor children. My opinions changed upon see the reality of the life of a poor child. This line has a mistake, the poor children, this line. Do you see where the mistake is, Lin Shan? Yes, do you see where the mistake is in this line?
Yes. This is wrong. How should we correct this? Seeing, good. So when this happened, okay, so it should be seeing, but for it's not because it's a participial construction. It's actually not. Because the subject already is here, my opinions. The subject of C should be I, but the subject of the main sentence is not I, it is my opinions. This should be ing because it is a gerund, domingzi. Upon can take a clause, zizhu, or it can take a noun. Upon the announcement, uh, something, something, right? So when the announcement came, you can take a noun. So this should be a noun, seeing. And when you use a verb like a noun, it is called a gerund. So seeing the reality of a poor uh, of the life of a poor child, this is one gerund noun. And so this should be ing. While landing in Santa Simona, I took a taxi to my hotel in the center of town. This line has a mistake. Cao Zhen? Cao Zhen Zai Ma? Ah, I called the name last week in the second period also, did not appear. Somebody should warn them. Tu Hong Wei? Hi. Do you see a mistake in this line while landing? Let me help you out. We're looking at this sentence, right? Two things, landing and taking a taxi. Are these two things happening at the same time? It's happening at different times, right? First land, then take a taxi. So you can't say while. How can we change this? We can replace while with another word. Something like. After. Right or something like. Upon after is the better choice. So this would be the kind of participial construction with a subordinate conjunction. This one. Right changing this to after. Uh, where I met Elena, a girl of 10 or 11, sat on a dirty blanket in the si on the sidewalk in front of the hotel. She caught my eye. Elena was trying to earn a living by selling mangoes. Smiled at me. She asked, mango, senor? Mango, sir? So there's a mistake in this line. Let's see if you can find it. Do you see the mistake in this line? Yes, this is wrong. Should not be smiled. It should be. How should we change this? Smiling, good. Same subject as the main sentence, she. It is an active verb, 主动, so it should be smiling. I bought some mangoes and some other fruit and we talked together. Elena's life had been difficult. Her parents were both dead and she lived with an elderly aunt. Having polio at the age of five, she now walked with a limp. 
I'll tell you guys, this is probably not the best word to use. This is this should probably be contracting or developing or catching. So this is not a grammar problem. This is a word choice problem. Have is too vague. We want a more concrete word. So to contract an illness means to catch an illness. Like, you know, to catch a cold. Polio, shara uh, She and her aunt often went hungry. Investigated the question the next day. I talked to several different authorities. There's a mistake in this line. Li Tong. Li Tong, Zaima. Ah, Dai Ti Li Tong, Hui Da. This, this hang. Do you see where the mistake is? Investigated the question the next day, Zai Hang. So you mean this should be investigating? Good. That is the question. That is the problem. The two halves of this sentence, right? Investigate and I talk to. These two are the same thing. He's investigating by talking to. That is his method of investigating. It's the same thing. So uh, this is an active verb, same subject, I. So this should be investigating. And I learned that they were indeed trying to help. Having become convinced that money from sponsors does in fact get to those who need it. So this is the correct version, right? Having become convinced. Uh, so earlier we changed convincing to having convinced. I knew my attitude had to change. Learning that I could sponsor Elena for less than a dollar a day, I began to feel ashamed. After all, I spend more than that on my dogs. But what remains most vivid in my mind is my vision of Elena. She didn't beg or feel sorry for herself. Sold her mangoes, she earned a living, and her spirit shone through in the process. There is a mistake in this line. Let's see if you can find it, Masu. Can you find a mistake in this line? All right, let me help you out. It's here. We're looking at this sentence. Sold her mangoes, she earned a living. This should be the same subject, right? She is selling her mangoes. So this is not sold, it should be selling. Selling her mangoes, she earned a living. And her spirit shone through in the process. So I say to all of you reading this, the next time you hear an ad about sponsoring a child, pay attention. All right, good job, guys. We caught them all. Um, there are two places that look like a mistake, but are not. Here. That was the way I thought before sent by my magazine to South America. There is actually the word being before sent. And the being is omitted based on Rui. It's passive voice, right? The magazine sent him, so he was sent, being sent, and the being is omitted. The other, uh, I guess, trick, Xinjing, is here. It looks like this should be sitting, right? She caught my eye. She was sitting on a dirty blanket, blah, blah, blah. But in fact, there is a usage where you can use the passive voice. She was sat on a dirty blanket. Uh, in terms of meaning, there's only a very small difference in meaning. If you sit, that means you choose to sit here. If you are sat, that means that there is some circumstance or some person that forces you or encourages you to sit there. 
I don't think the difference in meaning is big enough to call this a mistake. So this is again omitting the being being sat on a dirty blanket, etc. OK, do you have questions about this page? All right, well, I have very good news for you. If we finish the next page, you don't have homework. In fact, I have even better news for you. The next page, this paragraph. We did this last semester already. So if you remember, it can help you. It says that there are. Ten errors. Sometimes it's a grammar problem. Sometimes it's a meaning problem. The meaning is not clear enough. So let's see if you can find 10. We have a lot of time. I'll give you 10 minutes. Again, feel free to discuss with your classmates. Well, this is a bit harder than I remembered, so let's look at it together. Um, if you're watching at home and you want to keep working at it, just hit pause. OK, yoga and yaw, an excerpt. If you only learn one yoga posture, this should be it. Beginners can even do it. This should be even beginners can do it. Uh, you're emphasizing the beginners. You're not emphasizing the do. To form the greeting turtle posture. Uh, the mat should extend from knees to armpits, freshly laundered and dried to fluffiness. There are two mistakes in this sentence. The idea is that you are the person forming this posture. So the subject of this main sentence should be you. Um, in fact, there is no you because this is an imperative sentence. It begins with an, a verb that orders you to do something. Extend. Or I guess you can add the you back in. You should extend the mat. You should extend the mat. A mat is kind of like a, you know, a carpet. It's what you lie on when you do yoga. So this part is describing the mat. It's not describing the armpit, Isha. Freshly laundered means you had just washed it uh, and dried to fluffiness. So it's dry and soft. This is describing the mat. So you should extend. OK, I'm going to.
So we have clarified the subject. It should be you. We have moved this into the middle of the sentence, and therefore we should surround it with commas, right? One comma, two commas, to tell the reader that this has been put into the middle of the sentence. While bending the right knee up to the nose, sorry, up to the nose, the left ankle relaxes. Another mistake. Who is bending? You. You are bending. So the subject should be you. Or you can simply use an imperative and order uh, the reader. So this one should be relax as a verb, the left ankle. You're ordering the reader to relax the left angle. You. You should almost bend the knee for a minute before straightening it again. Another mistake. You don't almost bend. You bend it. It's bent. You bend it completely. It's almost for a minute. You should bend the knee. Sorry. You should bend the knee for almost a minute. The almost is modifying the length of time. Almost a minute. Throw your head back now, extending each muscle to its fullest, only breathing two or three times before returning the head to its original position. Well, there is a mistake here. Which part of the sentence does now belong to? Is it saying now you should throw your head back? Or is it saying throw your head back and the next moment, now you should be extending each muscle to its fullest. Well, the whole essay is nonsense, so I think you can put the now e in either place. You can add the comma before now or after now. You just have to choose one. Um, I think it would make slightly more sense to say throw your head back now. Comma. You can even say now, comma, throw your head back. Comma. Let me let me write that. Extending each muscle to its fullest. Who is doing the extending? You are same person who is throwing your head back, so this is correct. Only breathing who is breathing. You are same subject two or three times before returning the head to its original position. Tucking the chin close to the collarbone, the nose should wriggle. OK, so who is doing the tucking to tuck means to pull in. Wang Xia So so who is doing the tucking? You are. The subject is wrong. This should be you. So you should wiggle your nose or you should wiggle the nose. Finally, raise the arms to the sky and bless the yoga posture that is blue. Uh, so of course, the blue thing is not the posture. The blue thing is the sky. So this should be raise the arms to the sky that is blue and bless the yoga posture. OK, so again, the essay is meaningless. You're not supposed to actually be able to do this. The point is to look at the grammar. So do you have questions about the grammar? OK, well. That finishes today's uh, practice questions. Next week we're going to look at. Direct questions, 直接问句. See you guys next week. <laughs>